Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're having a look at the new best way to array along an object. So I've got quite a few videos on this topic, basically going through this since I was doing my early videos and slowly improving on the process as Blender improves. It started with arraying along curves and then gradually moved on to using geometry nodes to array, and then finally what is still a really handy method of being able to make tracks when you've got linked objects but they've got gaps between them. I'll put a link to all those videos in the description if you're interested in them, and as I say, some of them are still relevant depending on what you want to do. But with version 11 of Bagapai now out as an add-on, which is free in essence, I would say that this is probably the best method yet. Now let's just get looking at this and then we'll talk about where we're going to use this to create like a chain sword, because I like Warhammer. So what we're going to do is use this object and we want another cube to array along it. So let's just scale that down and up in the Z axis and then we'll just, I don't know, sort of move it to there-ish. And do note this is slightly offset, it's partly inside this object and that really doesn't matter or cause a problem. Actually I'm going to move this along just so I can demonstrate something. I'm going to apply the scale and I can't remember if I applied the scale for this one but we'll do that as well. So once you've installed Bagapai, if we press N, you get the N menu and you get a Bagapai menu at the side. And this shows you where you can go to have all of your main menus. And the main one you're going to use is J. So to do this, what we're going to do is click and shift click on the object that we want to array this along. And I'm going to hit J. And we've got an absolutely massive amount of tools here. In fact, actually, let me just do this so it's a bit more visible. Now I'm going to do a load of videos covering different bits of these because, well, there's just so much to talk through here. But for now, we're just going to stick with the array and we're going to array along a shape. And that will array the first object clicked along the second object click, so the active object. So I'm going to click that and you can see we've got something going on. And if I come back and click on this, we get all the information going on here. Now you can also do this in the modifier panel, but actually I think it's probably laid out a little bit nicer here. And I'd say this has been more designed to be used in this end panel. First limitation I want to mention is we've got a distance and we can change that distance so everything moves along. At the moment, let's just down this count to let's say two and we can move this along our object. Now the first limitation, it doesn't deal very nicely with negatives, or it actually seems to be doing okay here, but in some instances before I've had some problems with it. The other thing it doesn't deal with very well is really sharp edges. So if I just scroll this along here, you can see it sort of gets blocked. Now this is relatively easy to solve. We could either do this non-destructively or I'm gonna do this destructively, so Control and B, and you can see this works in real time. So this is really cool. So let's just make that a little bit more rounded something like that, and then we can go back into object mode, click here, and carry on with our distance or up our count as much as we want. Remember, if you hold down shift, this sort of goes a little bit slower, maybe by a tiny bit. So this is our array, we can change our distance nice and easy. Now, we have got this precision section here, and all that does is it just makes the distancing a little bit more accurate from what I'm told to get, yeah, so you can see that's definitely a bit more accurate once we're going around these corners. Now there's just so much we can do with this. I'll just come into here, let's bevel that as well. We can also just do things like R and rotate this round, and it's gonna work fine, it's gonna deal with all of this. The only, th ah, there we go. So you can see it's sort of having some problems here on these corners, but as I said, very easy to solve with a bevel, and we can just move this round as much as we want and everything's gonna keep going. I mean, this is just absolutely awesome. Now let's have a look at this in a more real world example so you can see me making a chain sword out of this. But as I said, this is available free. You can get it in two places. The first is on the Blender extension warehouse. So just edit, preferences, and then come to get extensions. And then you just type in Bagapai. And I've already got this installed, but you'll have a little install button there. The other place you can get this is on the Superhive market as well. And as you can see, that is available free or you can give them a little bit of a tip or well, there are some paid for versions. Now, if you are into just 3D design for 3D printing, these are probably not gonna be very interesting for you. But if you're into things like rendering or making scenes, these might be really interesting for you. I'm gonna show you these assets in a second. And do note at the moment there's 40% off using this code. So if you wanna get this, I would get this while this is going on. I have no idea how long that's gonna last. There is an affiliate link for this in the description. It costs you no extra but it does mean that you give a little bit of money towards the channel as well, which is obviously really appreciated. Now, let me just scroll down here and you can see just the sheer number of tools that we've got. 
But if I come down here, you can see that there's loads of presets and I'm trying to get down to here. So our assets. So these are the assets that you get. And there are obviously two levels of this, a lesser level where you get less of them and a level where you get all of these. All of them have little individual bits that you can change. So for example, if you've got this tree, you can change the shading of it to match the season, which is obviously really cool. And if I just scroll down, you can see some of the things that you can create with this really easily. And here's the asset library and what you get. Now, if you come down here, you can see we've got the sizes related to a person. And if I just scroll through, you can just see how detailed all of these are and just how many of them there are. There are so many plants. The ones I really like are these stones as well that you can combine together in different ways. And Bagapai has some settings for using scatter. In fact, it has a lot of settings for using scatter in different ways, which means you can create some really great scenes from what I've seen of this. Again, it's not my speciality. I deal with 3D printing. But you also get at the higher end, these biome settings, and that appears to combine these together in these complex layouts that you can just fiddle with the presets and you get something that looks really, really nice. Anyway, so that's your options, but let's have a look at this in a more real world modeling scenario. So this is a chainsaw, and I've modeled one of the teeth that are gonna be sort of moving backwards and forwards along this edge to effectively make a chainsaw blade. So we'll just come to Bagapai, and I'm going to click here, shift click on this, J, and then we're going to array along a shape. Now, you can see here that we've got this array. Let's see if it will work on the minus if I bring this to a negative. It does seem to be working okay. Maybe it was just earlier that it was being a bit of a pain, but actually we've only got one of these objects where we should have three. So, as I say, there are some issues with this negative. I'm going to put that to 10 and we'll put the count. Now let's leave it for six for now. So all I'm gonna do just to try and resolve this, is just press G and move this up here. And you can see this is working in real time. I can up the distance to make this a bit better and I can rotate this round because I want this sort of sticking out somewhere there and just move it to the point where it's gonna work. And you can see it's really not slowing down my computer at all. I mean, I do have a fairly decent computer but I'm also recording at the same time as doing this. And you can see how well this is arraying along this edge that is here, so it's slightly inset. Let's up our count until we get to the point where we're happy with this. So I could either go there and bring my distance back and have a bit more overlap, or maybe bring it down to 12 and have something a bit there. Either one looks pretty much fine. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually up my precision so you'll notice that this is gonna change it slightly. And there is a slight bit of distortion here. Actually, I think that's my fault. That's my fault, I haven't applied the scale. Let's apply the scale, and there we go. Everything's looking perfect now. So that is not an issue with Bagapai, that is an issue with me having been lazy and the way that I did things previously. Oops, let's bring that count down a bit, and let's bring those distances back so this now works. There we go. Let's go with that. And I think you'll agree that looks absolutely fantastic for what was seconds of work and then fixing the scale. So do make sure you apply your scale to this. Again, there are links to previous videos on arrays in the description, as well as that affiliate link for this awesome add-on. Have a great day, guys.